Welcome to Cool Computer Science. In this video, I'm going to show you how a C++ program is processed. My goal is for you to understand how a C++ program is processed so that you can write and debug a C++ program. If you are more interested in the topic, there is much to be said on processing your program. Computer science courses such as computer architecture or programming languages will explore this topic in greater detail. Let's first begin by considering what a high-level programming language is. A high-level programming language is a language that is similar to the language that we speak. For example, C out 3 plus 5. A low-level programming language is an, an assembly language where each line of the program represents a piece of data or instruction for the processor. For example, load 3, add 5, and then output. And third type of language is the machine language. And this language is the language that your computer understands that is an organized sequence of ones and zeros. As you already know, C++ is a high-level programming language. And the goal here is to get this high-level programming language into a machine language. So the process of doing that is what we are now going to consider. In my last video, we wrote our first C++ program. And what we did was that we wrote the program in an SDK. An SDK is a software development kit. And my question is, how does it work? Well, to understand that, we have to consider how a C++ program is processed because an SDK helps us to process our C++ program. So an S software development kit will have an editor. An editor is where we would write our source code. For example, a high-level programming language, such as C++. The extension that we would use to save a source code is .cpp. We don't have to write our source code in, in, in an SDK like Bloodshed. We can use a notepad file and you simply go to File, Save As, we give it a name, mycode.cpp, and save. And this will create a source, a file for our source code which we will then have to run through a compiler. Next is the preprocessor. Once we've written once we've edit, written our source code, we are ready for the preprocessor. So what does the preprocessor do? Well, in order for a preprocessor to work, it has to follow it has to, you have to have a preprocessor directive. And that's what this is. And what the preprocessor program does is that it takes everything that you indicate by this preprocessor directive and puts it into your source code. For example, in this case, I'm taking everything in IO, IO stream and putting it into the source code. Now, there is a reason why there are angular brackets here. And this says to look into the standard directory for this header file. If you want to look into another directory, what you all you'd have to do is you specify instead of these angular brackets, just use some quotes where you can sp here you can specify your own directory here, like what I've done here, users slash c file dot h. In this case, it follows this path and goes to c file dot h and puts all of its content in c file dot h into my source code. Once you've, once the preprocessor program has ran, it is now time for the compiler. So 
So what does the compiler do? The compiler's role is to convert the high-level language into machine language, and it creates an object program. An object program is a machine language version of the, of the C++ code that you typed. More generically, a machine language version of a high-level programming language. In order for this to work, and that is, in order to formulate this machine language, there has to be no syntax errors in your source code in the high-level language. So again, an object program is a machine language version of the high-level language. After your program has been compiled, it is now time to link your program. Linking connects all the functions in the program. That is, it plugs in the code for all of the functions in the program. C++ has a library. This is a library of functions that we can use at any time. A function is a set of statements whose objective is to accomplish a specific task. For example, in this case I've written a little bit of code. I first use the preprocessor directive and include math.h. Math.h has a list of math functions that you can use, like square root, round, floor, uh, random, and different things. One of those functions, as I mentioned before, was square root. Here I'm taking saying call the square root function and take the square root of 124 and store it into the variable num. The code for the square root function is placed at this at the time of linking. After all of the functions have been linked, what is created is an executable code, but none of the memory addresses are filled in at this point in time. The next process that we're going to look at is called loading. What loading does is that loading fills in the address locations in that executable file and makes the file fully executable. And finally, the last process is execution. Execution is when your program runs. And you can see the results of your program. So this is a six-step process. First is the editor, then the preprocessor, then the compiler, then the linker, the loader, and finally execution. And in my next video, I'm going to apply these processes to program development. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to revisit that first program that we wrote in my video, My First C++ Program. And we're going to take a look at how this pro these processes affect program development. So I really encourage you to watch this second video. And I hope that you really enjoyed this video.